I'm Baby Jane Dexter. I'm Julie Wilson. And this is That's Kentertainment. Yay! <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what with the election over and all, there's only been one thing on everybody's mind, and that is lip syncing. Oh. Now, you know, we here at That's Kent Entertainment like to do things old school. So tonight, I'll be singing for you live the way I work. Because there's no business like show, business like no, business I know. Nowhere can you get those happy feelings. That's entertainment feelings. Ah, entertainment is the show that you love, love, love. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? That's live TV! <laughs> I'm having actually a bit of an acid reflux problem. And all truth be told, David came in at the wrong time. You I mean, filthy I liar! <laughs> okay, you be no washed. Now I'm not gonna spin and dry you! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing there? Well, on today's show, it's very exciting. I, I, I can't wait for you to see Karen Mason and Baby Jane Dexter. I mean, they're just wonderful. And so make way for Karen Mason. To the magic door. Wow. Great show. I'm going to gush because it was really fantastic. And, and the crowd obviously ate it up. It was a great crowd. So how did the show come about? Well, we were looking to do... I, I had this job in Chicago at a place called Davenport's, um, which is a, a cabaret that's owned by some good friends of mine. And Chris and I actually opened it when uh, um, they opened a few years ago. I think it was like two or three years ago. And um, we were looking for a new show. And we were thinking and actually of just doing a lot of stuff we already knew because we were being a little lazy. And we had just two and a half weeks. And as we were going through, I said, these are the songs I really would like to do. And as we were going through, we decided, you know, it was like, oh, no, I really don't want to do that. Oh, no, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. And we just started coming up with all of these songs that we really wanted to do in these arrangements and within two and a half weeks we added 11 new songs and a, you know a, a lot of really fast wonderful arrangements I, I you know the three of us um, Barry Kleinbord, Chris Denny and myself now have been working together for a few years so we kind of have this shorthand and we fill in with each other and it really was amazing I, I think I would never ever want to have to learn 11 new songs in, in two weeks ever again <laughs> But it was uh, a real challenge, and we came up with a show that we, the first time we did it in Chicago, people just loved it. It's, um, you know, movie musicals, and they're familiar songs, and yet, um, you know, what Chris and Barry and I have tried to do is make them, uh, you know, fresh for us and also for the audience. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's worked out really well for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, even uh, I never would have thought of almost Paradise being, you know, done exactly. That. I, mean, I know it was a ballad originally, you know, the uh, from, from Footloose, as you said. <laughs>
hook girl. I, I sort of know the hooks of a lot of songs, and that's about it. You know, when I was growing up and singing along with the Beatles and everybody else, I, I would know the hooks and then kind of make up the lyrics <laughs> on my own, um, which doesn't necessarily honor the songwriters very well. But uh, you know, I, I had some of them, and that's that's actually a dangerous thing when you kind of know a song, because then you have to learn what the lyric really is, and it's hard. It's like unlearning, learning, unlearning, learning. But uh, I, I love this show. I you know, it's um, we have a great time doing it, and it's um, uh, using a lot of different parts of my voice that um, we haven't used in the past, and that's that's very exciting, you know. So, um, yeah, it's nice to always be able to include, you know, kind of add new things, uh, new places to go. No, you're a Chicago girl originally. I, well, yeah, I was born in New Orleans, uh, so I'm a Southerner, but I grew up in the Midwest. So we, I grew up in St. Louis and uh, Arlington Heights, Illinois. Oh, do you really? I grew up in Chicago. Oh, well, there I you mean, go. Yeah, and my dad, and my dad from Chicago, that could explain a lot about the hook thing because he could sing like one line of a song and then go <laughs> bee -dee -bee -dee -bee about everything. You know. Well, maybe it is a Midwestern thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or an age group thing. Actually, could be that. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is one show my dad won't be watching, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I just think we have a really nice, um, it's a word that probably I've not wanted to use in my vocabulary a lot, which is commercial. But I think we've got a very commercial show here, and yeah, I think people respond to it. You know, they like hearing songs they know. I guess I feel that way sort of too when I when I go some, see somebody. You know, and you you want to feel there's so much to get to know when you see a new singer, a new performer, that it's you know it, it kind of it's a it's a good thing to hear songs you know. Yeah, it's a little comforting. Well, you know the you know Jiminy Cricket and well, you know everything. I know. You got you got a favorite in the show or one or two favorites? Um, I uh, I've just uh, for. Um, decibel level alone um all that jazz i really like yeah I, that's a really fun arrangement to sing singing When You Wish Upon a Star. That it just is such a beautiful song. It's just a beautiful, beautiful song. I love, that leaves me with a great feeling, and I, I know, I, I think it's a nice way to leave an audience. Like a boat out of the blue, fate steps in and sees you through. Well, stage say compared to the Broadway stage I pretty much like any stage you know I think it's that middle child in me um, I, I just like to sing and perform so the good thing about a cabaret is you get to see people you know and they're right there and you get to sing the songs that you like when you're singing in a Broadway show you learn to like what you're doing you know you learn to you you know if you're lucky you're working with a lot of great people you can um, you you know you, you interact with and share with but you know, there's it's it's great. I I'm very very lucky that I get so many options to perform in so many different ways. And you know what? I think this is an amazing career. I, it's a it's an amazing business where people love what they do so much that they're willing to do what they have to do to be in it. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I I, I it's just it's it astounds me how how much people 
love what they do and how much they're willing to do for it. I, I just, you know, I admire the people in our business. I, I, I don't, when I started, the, the guy I worked with, uh, Brian Lasser, was an amazing, um, uh, mm, he was an amazing force in my life because I don't think I probably would have moved here if it had not been somebody kind of, you know, grabbing me and dragging me from the Midwest here. I don't know if I would have had the guts to do it. So the people who come here and just, you know, start working, I, I got to tell you, I admire each and every one, you know, anybody in this business who's doing it. It's just an amazing thing. It takes a lot of gumption, a lot of stick to and a lot of guts, a lot of guts. Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah, I know. You know, and you just have to constantly invent things for yourself, like you do. You know, it's like you invent a show for yourself. You know, and here we are. Here we are. Yeah, and you get people to come on the show. I mean, what a what a that's a very smart and wonderful thing to do. I get to learn the little uh, tricks of the trade here, the secrets. You see, I have no secrets. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. You know. Thank you. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, I Great know. person Here to we talk are. to. Look at this. Look at this. Did you get, did so you get beautiful. Of the room there. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well. This is beautiful. We're right in front of a mirrored ball. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah. and did you get enough of those in Mamma Mia? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. All right. Well, at that uh, note. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we don't want to leave you depressed. <laughs> Although it is kind of a personal style. <laughs> this next song was written by Irving Berlin 70 years ago for Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. <coughs> and it's truly amazing how the song is still relative to today. There may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight and music and love and romance, let's face the music and dance.
Wasn't that fun? And I just love that Karen Mason. And now, as if that wasn't enough, here's Baby Jane Dexter, who has a great new show at Helen's called Bread and Gravy. Ah. Through the magic door. Ooh. She's such a marvelous person, you see, and all this heart that she is and is about, and it's in her, in her life, and every with every breath she takes. And uh, she, she, you never know what's going to come out of that mouth of hers. <laughs> and every show is so different, and so much fun, and so much baby. Uh, I, I really think she's a marvelous entertainer. You know, I pick songs, or I, I have a, a, a thing I want to sing about, which usually is a point of view about whatever's happening in the world or, uh, or however I'm feeling. And my shows keep getting more and more intimate and more and more, I think, appreciative of, uh, of other people. The show is like a gallery, and each song is a painting in the gallery. And you'll notice that I do not describe the songs because I don't want anybody to have the, be told what to think because the, the, the bond like between me and the audience is um, the emotion that's elicited from the song. I got to get you into my life. I got to get you into my life. to the show and what I see when I'm on stage is an audience with a lot of members and they all have um, these little cartoon bubbles above, above their heads and the cartoon, each person's cartoon says something like maybe about the parking or what happened at their job today or about um, something they're worried about tomorrow or something they're just thinking about their clothes or whatever, their diet or whatever, whatever thing is on their mind. Or, or something that they have to face for their boss, or somebody's annoying them, or somebody's, or they got to remember to give a present to somebody, whatever. They all have a different thing inside their cartoon bubble. And what I see is, and what drives me is because I feel this from the audience, and it's evolved over the years. As the show begins and as it continues, I see these bubbles start popping, 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 so that. All these individuals become this one group or one being with me, and it's all about the music. I want other singers that are new who come to see me or to understand that if their voice cracks, if this happens, do whatever they do, it doesn't, I mean, the wall could fall down, and I will not budge because it's all about the audience. And it's like, if you stop what you're doing or, uh, clutch your throat or worry about, you know, it's not about, people don't want to leave their house to listen to you, listen to yourself sing. No. You know, it's not about that. And so the big deal is that, I, but it took me a long time to learn it. I can't, that the privilege, the, the, uh, the thrill is to be able to affect people in, a, in, a, uh, in, in some kind of human way, some kind of emotional way. And, and you do that every time you sing. Thank you. You will always do that. You reach everybody. It's the reaching. Like a special, like, 
octopus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here I go again, I'm hearing trumpets blow again, all aglow again, taking a chance on love. Here I try again, about to take that ride again, starry eyed again, taking a chance on love. It took me a long time to understand what it is that I do. And I, when I was a, a kid, and people used to like my singing, like at church or wherever, you know, people or at school or something. I really didn't get it. You know, I didn't understand why they liked it because I didn't sound the way I thought people, why I heard people like in the movies and on TV and shows. Like I thought, I didn't think I had a very nice voice or anything. I just thought it was, I liked singing and I, I was usually pretty loud. So. Uh, but you make the words you live, darling. Well, I didn't know it's that not then. About I, it. Well, you do. But I was a kid, and I just thought I, I didn't question why people. Um, I, I mean, I thought, well, they like it for some reason, so I better not argue with them. They seem to be moved. I don't get it. And then as the years went on, and and here's the thing. I stopped singing in 1981, and started over in 1991. It got derailed, and when you lose the thing that you do and you get it back again, it means a whole bigger thing, another thing. And the reasons for why you're doing it is different. I think years and years ago, I was singing. I didn't even know why I was singing. I just what I did, you know, and, and I wanted to have it. In fact, years ago when I, I sang at Tramps and I was getting all this like attention and TV and stuff like that, and I'd be standing at the back of the room waiting to go in. It was packed and I'd be thinking, how did I fool these people? And the big difference between then and now is I can't wait to get there, to do, to do what I, ha I have to do to share this thing that I, I'm so excited. I mean, it's been validated by the people who come and say, can I hug you? That, you know, they, it's not like a sexual, I, mean, it's, I know I'm just Miss Sex Talk for no reason. Uh, uh, but it's not like a, it's, it's just somebody will stand up and that's, just some guy or some older person or a, a young person, a, a teenager, they'll want to have a hug. Not for any reason other than that they've moved. It's like, so this has been revealed to me since I started over singing, started singing again after losing my way. And it just gets clearer and clearer and clearer so that I'm, I'm so what I do now is. You're meant to be here and hug a lot of people. Yeah, it's the hugging part. <laughs> Sweetheart, the night is growing on. Sweetheart, my love is still untold. A kiss that is never tasted forever and ever is wasted. Why should we waste a night like this? Why should we waste a single kiss? Why can't we laugh at tomorrow? Tomorrow we'll pay what we borrow.
So do you prefer the uh, the cabaret uh, stage to the uh, Broadway stage, or is there not a preference? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the set here, the set is going. I, don't know what I'm I swear I didn't drink anything. I didn't. I'm parched. Let me try that again. So I do you find that the... Uh, so real. The block was your big show. I hope it Yeah, but this great. is great. I mean, he's uh, just got this wonderful show, and everybody's talking about it. And... And they did a big story in the New York Times. Wonderful. And I'm so lucky to be on it. Well, so hi, Julie Wilson. I see a cute red-headed kid. <laughs> <laughs> kid, oh boy. <laughs> there you are. Aww.